Hello, my friends. Jacob is here one more time. Welcome again. Uh, we got some things to talk about today. We definitely want a rocket to reach Uranus. That's uh, it's a stretch goal to reach Uranus, uh, but uh, definitely something uh, we think we should aim for. Elon Musk has been saying all sorts of interesting things, things that got Jacob's attention, because you know Jacob on the channel, Uranus is a planet, Uranus, it's a, it's a planet, and it's also a little more than that. It was actually the first merchandise that I ever used. The first mer merchandise that I ever had was Uranus is a planet. And then years later, we found out that Uranus, Uranus, is actually the name for heaven. So when you see the kingdom of heaven, you see the kingdom of Uranus. I made the little bit of a joke about how Uranus is you are Anus, because it's actually the kingdom of Anu. It's actually about the planet Nibiru as well. Very interesting. But the day before my birthday, which by the way, was just fantastic. Thank you so much for all of you that, you know, wished me. I had so many people saying so many wonderful things and my birthday was the best. It was absolute best. I actually even got a fudgy to whale cake, if you can believe that. Oh yeah, yeah, take a look. Which I feel is very significant, especially because of the day that we're in. Yeah, three years ago, Michael Packard got swallowed by that great, great uh, humpback whale. Remember when he was a lobster diver and uh, we called it the sign of Jonah? Well, here we are three years later and it seems like a new day is on the horizon. So, of course, when Elon put out that, that, this little video right here, take a look. We definitely want a rocket to reach Uranus. That's, uh, it's a stretch goal to reach Uranus, uh, but uh, definitely something uh, we think we should aim for. I thought, well, oh, that's strange. That's strange because Uranus is kind of like a thing for me. So I go back and I do a little search. You know, I take, I take X by storm. I, I go back to the history of the things that I posted and go figure, go figure. I had a post that actually stated, this is not about Uranus. And on the thumbnail, there was a picture of an alien and it said mind games on either side. Now, what's weird about this post is the fact that in that post, it linked to a video that I did, a video that had to do with time travel, teleportation, aliens, and the Mandela effect, the stretching of space time. So, of course, I made the connection. I said, what if he's not joking? He's the most powerful man in the world with everything connected to 7-Eleven, according to him. He's got to be in on the know. So I watch my video back and I am just blown away that I had done this years ago. And what do I wake up to this morning? At 11.7, my time, that's 7.11 backwards. What does Elon put out? He puts out this tweet right here. Oh, and it's a tweet that has to do with teleportation <laughs> and uh, time travel which is exactly what my video was about. He just likes to show off by putting it in a little 7-Eleven backwards, because of course that's what I've been talking about again and again and again. So does he watch the show? I don't know. But I will say that recently I have been in touch with a couple of celebrities, which is strange. You know who Ricky Gervais is? Comedian, which you probably know him from The Office and from, you know, the Golden Globes. Everybody likes to celebrate the time that he hosted there, but he puts out a lot of weird things. I watched his video last year with, with the Dan Dan, I think it was called Armageddon, where he made a joke about, you know, men that are into children, and it was, you know, just very, like the comedy, the comedy that he was sharing, I don't know if he was trying to prove a point or something, but it just didn't sound too funny to me. A little weird, right? So of course, for whatever reason, Ricky Gervais pops up on my feet. I wasn't even following him, but there he is, like half naked in a bathtub, and he's calling himself like a, you know, a wellness, and a, I guess that's the bit. He goes in that bathtub and he t pretends that he's like a, an influencer for wellness and other things, and um, I just thought it was strange. So I put out a little tweet. I said, I said, that's just weird. You're a grown man, right? I think he's probably gonna be 60 years old and maybe 60 years old. Who wants to look at this guy in the tub with his chest hair and his 
you know, his teeth, his teeth looks like a little bit like vampires, people say. I mean, he's a very funny guy. He's very bright, he's very dry, but for whatever reason, he decides to come back at me. And he's like, well, why does my naked body, you know, um, trouble you so much? So I told him, I said, well, because I, you know, I was a little bit disappointed, <laughs> a little bit disappointed. Yeah, I was trying to be funny, but also I was a little bit disappointed because it's like, hey, what are you doing in a bathtub, man? You're like a grown dude. And you're like a multimillionaire. And it's like, and I, I think of the setup, I, I, like even this, coming to the beach to just do this piece, I want to make it look nice for you. I think I like the setup. You know, there's like, it's, it's very strange. But he went back and forth with me. And he said to me, he goes, he said, he goes, I bet it was you that made Adam wear that little fig leaf. And uh, that was just very strange because of course fig leaves are not what you think. Fig leaves are symbolic of like, I don't know, like religious works that you clothe yourself with to try to, you know, to, to be uh, more holy or to feel like you're somehow a good person. The fig leaf, because they were ashamed of who they were, so they had to do something to clothe themselves with it. But really, a fig leaf is just, it's empty. Jesus, when, when he saw the fig tree, when he was coming on the road and he saw the fig tree and he was hungry and he wanted something to, you know, to, to eat that would actually nourish his, his, uh, his craving, which is symbolic of, you know, you see the fig tree which in scripture is called Israel or you know God's people or the church but you go to that fig tree and it's not producing any fruit you can't get fed from it like a lot of these celebrities you go to they got maybe plenty of fig leaves a lot of them are saying Jesus this and Jesus that Russell Brand Candace Owens all of them they're all on the Jesus is King tip which is okay I guess I've done videos after this, but then no sooner does I have a little back and forth with Ricky Gervais, which of course was very cool because he's a very big famous celebrity. It wasn't like clout chasing or anything else. Let's be honest, I thought it was a little weird. My wife would say, you're weird. What are you doing? Doing so like he, she says to me, it's like, you shouldn't, don't wear a tank top in a video. <laughs> you know, it's like, unless you're at the gym, which by the way, I, I, I just shared a, a video of me turning 53 at the gym. Look at me doing dips right there. I couldn't even do a dip to begin with. People don't know that it just takes one little step to, and then take another step. You know, it's never too late. I don't care what position you're in. I don't care how much weight you think that you, you have, that you have to lose. All you gotta do is take a step, eat a little better, dr you know, dr drink more water, stay away from this, stay away from that. Do the right thing. Move, get out, move, take a walk do something and then down the road next thing you know you're doing handstand push-ups you're doing dips kicking your feet up even though Noah says that I'm cheating he says that I'm moving around we, we were talking about this at the birthday last night because Noah is my my uh, my oldest son who's like he looks like Thor he's in such great shape he took over at the, the, the mattress store right now and he's he's actually working in the store that I was working in and he's been given the desk that I had He's also one of the top salesmen there too. You know, the apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree. It's nice to have a job where you can actually help somebody find some rest. Today, people need some rest. The problem is they're going to all these celebrities for this stuff. And what are the celebrities doing? They're coming to you with their shirts off, looking all weird like Russell Brand. I woke up this morning, Russell Brand, he's nude or whatever, maybe he wasn't. That was the uh, thing that Ricky Gervais said. He goes, I'm wearing tights and sandals, which makes it even weirder, man. You know, just makes it even weirder. <laughs> then why don't we put on a shirt? Why don't we get to see your, like, your, your splotchy, hairy chest, like Russell Brand coming over there, the influencer that he is. Very strange. So I think it is like bathtub uh, comms going on. Is that what it is? Are they trying to say something else? Are we ba about to be baptized? Well, maybe, maybe. My birthday, June 11th, was also, just so you know, it was also Shavuot. That's when God, you know, gave M Moses the Torah. It was when God gave instruction to Moses for the people. But it was also my birthday this year, 53 years of age. It was also on a holiday that would literally be called Pentecost. That's what we got Pentecost from. It's when the Spirit of God poured out on those that were in the upper room, because that's what they were there to celebrate. Isn't that interesting? So God gives you the instruction, God gives you the spirit, the wisdom, the truth, and then guess what else it was? My buddy Ernie, my good friend Ernie in Hawaii, he tells me it's King Kamehameha or Kamonomohu. I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name, but he's the king. And uh, he was the first king. So God gives you the law, God gives you the spirit, God gives you instruction, God gives you the wisdom and the spirit, which of course is love, the peace, righteousness, peace and joy. Jesus said that my words are spirit and they are truth, love, power, peace, hope. 
and then he makes you a king. Happy birthday, me. And I'm not gonna be doing a video in the bathtub anytime soon, but I will show you how uh, wonderful this is. We definitely want a rocket to reach Uranus. That's uh, it's a stretch goal to reach Uranus, uh, but uh, it's definitely something uh, we think we should aim for. That's strange. And then I watched the video, and the video was just like, well, you take a look and tell me. But not as cool as when you actually start to peel back the layers of what uh, some of the big brains like Stephen Hawking and others have said about black holes. You've probably heard of Hawking radiation. radiation which is basically if something gets sucked into the black hole right the energy of that that was sucked into the point of no return as they say would evaporate and it actually becomes this Hawking radiation I think it's the same type of thing that they're uh, thinking would power starships ideas like this and the idea of antimatter you know weapons and antimatter powered craft which is what's going on right now at CERN yeah they just actually they just created more antimatter this time they created antimatter that lasts a lot longer now if you know what antimatter is it's the opposite of matter so everything has an equal and opposite part okay so they don't understand why there's so much matter but they don't see a lot of antimatter so that it's different so what they did was they want to understand why is it why is there so much matter present but there's not as much antimatter present so what they've done was they've created it yeah and they're storing it Yeah, they're creating this uh, posit positronium atoms, which last a lot longer. They ask, they, they last 1,140 nanoseconds each. It's a long time. <laughs> it's not a long time, but I guess it's long enough for them to carry out some experiments, which they don't need the, uh, the big large Hadron Collider where they're smashing those atoms because that's under repairs for a couple of years right now. CERN has actually stated that they've created many black holes as well. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Very dangerous stuff. Because, you know, you put matter and antimatter together, guess what you get? They annihilate each other. They annihilate each other. That's why Hawking was one of the uh, people that were very critical about CERN saying, look, we shouldn't be doing this stuff because you're opening up the door to trouble. You're opening up the door to possibly creating a Mandela effect. Just saying. Just saying. Don't quote me on that. That was Stephen Hawking talking about the Mandela effect. Nah, I'm just kidding. He didn't say that. But he did say that things are going to, if, uh, you know, if there's a possibility for it. So why would you attempt fate, right? Can you believe this? Can you believe how time is moving so fast? It was just, literally, it was just, it was just last summer. And then here we are again. That's not a bad thing. I love the summer. And I love each and every one of you. I hope that this video, would, uh, I hope it encouraged you a little bit. You know? All right, I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, get yourself some merch, go to the description of the video, get yourself some truly free home products. You clean your, your house, you don't gotta worry about getting all sorts of chemicals and toxic waste and all sorts, and you can you know that your children are gonna get, you know, clothes that washed in laundry soap that's not gonna, you know, give them weird allergies. And also, it's terrible what these corporations do. Go to trulyfreehome.com, use code Jacob, you get 30% off. All this stuff that you do, it's very helpful for uh, me, it's helpful for uh, the channel, and it helps me to be able to keep coming to all of you, which I hope that you enjoy. Let me know in the comment section if you did. I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger it could well be a sign of good things to come thomas james shall be his name the world 
will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Click it.